here. Look here. Here we go. Fire all poked up a little. dramatic entrance and sadly I didn't film lighting the fire it, it, it was pretty amazing it really was uh, but you know that's I'm no professional and I, I certainly uh, screwed it up this time so my apologies but anyways uh, before we get started this is the start of the Saddle Shed series for 2018-2019 winter time. Uh, as you can see, we do it in front of a fire because it's, I mean, come on, it's just ranchy. It's how we like to do it here. And these things do take me a long time to get out, so thank you for your patience. Thank you for watching them. These are my favorite videos to make, like, all time. These are my absolute favorite. I really enjoy doing them. I don't know why I put them off so much. Uh, usually because, you know, it's about 9 o'clock now. Maybe uh, right around 9. Usually I'm tired, you know, end of the day. I do it at night because... And I, I really like to do it if there's, like, some snow on the ground or something. Maybe I'm just romantic. I don't know. I like to do it. But it's got to be cold outside because I'm not doing this in July. Not gonna happen. But that being said, let's get started. So this one I didn't do like most of them. Most of them I'll put a video out and say, hey, if you got a question, leave it down below. This one I, I put a picture back up in October. It was raining and cold and I was doctoring Kevs and there for about a week straight. I mean it was just terribly cold and I had my uh you know, for October in New Mexico, I had my fireplace going, it was rainy, and put a picture up saying, leave your questions below. So sometimes I may try that. I may not do that, may not do that, but uh, uh, I'm going to do some more of these. So if you have any questions, this is the video, put them down below. We'll do another video. Maybe I won't chalk it up next time and, and uh, screw up the deal, but only one page, so not a lot of them. Uh, let's see. We'll start with Mr. Brian Smith. What brand of cake feeder is your best in your opinion? Also, do you use bale beds? If so, what do you like? Uh, I've used the Mighty Handy cake feeders. They're an auger feeder. They're great for corn, small pellets, stuff like that. Uh, we've gone to trip hoppers. Trip hoppers are double to three times the price but they're an amazing feeder uh, just phenomenal feeders the mighty handy you know the auger feeders you know these ones use an electric motor they'll bind up or the the augers will wear out you know all kinds of stuff like that they all have their problems but the trip hoppers I, I really do like them but they they are pricey they're double the cost so but they work when you turn them on, so I get it's worth it. Uh, also, do you use bale beds? I don't use bale beds. I would love to have a bale bed, but I don't have the money to buy a bale bed. <coughs> I built had an arm unit built for one of my beds. When I, whenever I do get to buy another pickup with a flatbed, it'll have a bale bed, uh, and that that's just it'll get a bale bed and. Probably, 
maybe like a, I'm not going to buy a, a do easy because I can't afford one, but you know, maybe a, a butler or a cannonball or, you know, one of the triple C or whatever they are. I'm going to move this guy real quick because I think it's just kind of looking in my nostrils. It's my backup camera, so I don't do all this for nothing again. But yeah, I would love to have a bail bed. Next next pickup will definitely uh, definitely have one on it. So the next one's from Chance Garrier. I, I don't know how I butcher his last name. Bought a Massey Baylor also. I suppose he's referring to the round baler. How has it been? Have you had any problems? Um, so far, I really like the baler. Uh, there's, I did run into a few small things this year. Uh, one, it, getting used to loading the net wrap. Uh, and I, some guy on here left a, a comment. You, you got to go in the manual mode and press press the, the knife deal and it'll move a pan up out of the way. A lot easier to reload. Um, I have currently the only problems I have is on the net wrap system where the electric cylinder is that moves your, your uh, knife and your pan. Um, there's a piece like angle iron that a bolt went through it and then went through that cylinder and then went into the dill. The angle iron were bad welds on it and it popped off and that's something that's going to have to be rear you know, taken care of. It's under warranty but I'm kind of having some issues with my dealer right now. They're kind of, I don't know, just being interesting. And so I may just fix that myself. And the other thing is on the hydraulic block where you uh, you you shut it to lock the cylinders, that thing is leaking. Um, just seeping. I need to take care of that. Yet another question, is the 9870 the best in sorghum crops? Uh, the 9870 does really good, but you know, 10, 12 foot tall hay grazer, it, it doesn't run too fast. Especially if the stuff is laid over, uh, but I mean it, it'll cut it. I've got videos of it cutting it The new 9980 is supposed to be way way better a lot more horsepower in it, but I Don't have any problem cutting the stuff. I mean hundred times better than my old machine All right, the next one's from Aaron I don't even want to put it. Hewdy or Hute where to buy feeder steers for bull calves and where to sell them and at what weight? Um, I, I buy most of mine out of the south. Various places. Honestly, it's it's just really kind of, you got to look at what it's going to cost you to feed them and find your margins. You know, I can't tell you what weight to buy. And I can't tell you exactly where to buy because it's all margins. You got to make sure your margins are good enough to be able to do it. Because I mean, you can buy you can buy cheap calves, but if you can't sell them at the right margin, it doesn't do you any good. Anthony Peterson, what kind of bander do you prefer? So I have been using the Calicrate bander for a long time. And I'll actually, I'll actually just get out the ones I have. Because <coughs> they're all right here. So, used to knife cut all of our kids. Uh, 
speed. I just use the little green bands on the baby calves. Uh, the big yearlings that we were getting in, you know, 500 pounds, 500 pounds, we were using the, the Calicrate bander, and this is the old style. They have a newer one. This thing's heavy, and it's bulky, and it's awkward, but it works. Uh, uses this band, and it's got a little metal deal. You, uh, you slip it in here, and this ties into it, and it, you know, ratchets its way around, and then you, you gotta crush the metal ring, then you gotta cut the band, and then you gotta slit the bag. So, if you're not, if you haven't banded anything, and you're gonna start banding anything, like little calves, you don't have to do, put the band on, 99% of them, 99.9% .9 of them, the band doesn't break. Works fantastic. Just always give an eight way with it, that way it has the tetanus, calf doesn't get locked, jaw, and die. But the big calves that have big ones look like they're smuggling Puerto Ricans down there. I mean, they're, they're packing. Um, you put that band on, and you gotta get it down low towards the top, but then we always take a knife and we split that bag open either either you know up in the middle or right between the bottom you know right between the two of them because that gas when it starts to swell up can exit through that hole and it won't swell up and cause huge rubs and sores and it's just a just a nasty mess um, so this is the bander I'm currently using. This is the California bander. It fits right in here like this. Um, this is the band. 100 times faster. You just slip this little thing in here. Wraps around your finger and you grab that nut sack and wrap it around. And it just hooks back into that metal dill. A um, little bit cheaper. You know, this thing was like 200 almost Somewhere in there, 200 bucks, something like that. It's 40 bucks. Bands are same, if not a little cheaper. I did 200 of these things back in July. I cut half of them. I didn't think it was going to have enough pressure, you know, you know, take away the blood. I thought it wouldn't be a swelling issue. They swell. Um, so now, you know, I just did it just to find out. So we cut everything now. Uh, always just slit that bag. So, and I've got, I've been wanting a little, like a nice little straight blade knife. <coughs> but, this is what I use. This little guy. And, um, you know, it's dirty and covered in blood. And you need to Lysol it and clean it. But it's a little guy. Um, I like a little knife because if they do start moving around, you don't have a big long knife in there. And that's all you need because you just, real quick, that takes care of that. And happy Thanksgiving to everybody. Uh, I don't know if this is going to go up Tom tomorrow's Thanksgiving. But this will go up sometime. My fire was getting a little tough. <clears throat> All right, Mr. Dave Kelly. If you don't know him from DLK Hay. You go find him. Uh, met the guy in person. Phenomenal guy. Really, I, I'm very proud to call him a friend. A good close friend. He said, uh, if a coyote is running at 35 miles an hour across the pasture and you're doing 50 miles an hour, wait, I know this answer. It was in a Ford. So, little story. Dave came down, um, last December and he was getting ready to start his rebaling project 
I needed a little square baler. I found him a really good square baler. Happened to be right next door. We bought it and he went, we, we did that whole fun deal and then we went and checking cows and big open pastures, we like to chase cow, coyotes and pickups and shoot them. I think we killed three or four coyotes just feeding two pastures and we were in my Ford pickup and you see them and run across the pasture. So that's where that's from. It, it was a blast. I had a lot of fun. Um, you know, like I said, go check him out. Next one is Raiden Davis. He's left lots of questions, always comments. How's your liquid feed setup coming along? And how do you like the calf barn you built? So the liquid feed setup, I started that five years ago. Yeah, yeah, five years ago. And finally got electric pumps put in, put in a spare tank in. Uh, the only thing I do not have currently is a solid recirculating system. I've been meaning to do that for five years. Uh, it will get done this year since I finally have an electric pump and I can just plumb everything in. Um, it works good. I'm, I'm a very, very big believer in liquid feeds uh, in a right application. You know, um, I, I use Mix 30. There's no hiding that. Uh, I'm also a dealer for Mix 30. I think I just happened to be the only one in the area, so I got to be a dealer. But uh, they have... I, I did have some concerns with some cows. You know, their, their main product was 16% protein, and, and that really wasn't enough. They just rolled out a new product that's 28% protein, and it's still like 5 or 6% fat, so... Um, I'm excited to try it, but I mainly use Mix 30 in the feed yard and for that, and on calves on grass sometimes, for that it is phenomenal. Uh, little flyweight calves, their guts are just shot, they get on some liquid feed and it, it just kicks them right back in gear. I mean, you're almost 11% fat, and they're, they're doing just fantastic on it. Um, I did, uh, mainly one of our new deals is we're putting it in a, a weaning ration that is half hay or maybe a little more, and we're running 9%, 9 or 10% mix 30 in it, and I mean, it's a big forage ration is all it is, but the calves, they, they really do really good. Now about three weeks on it, three to four weeks, they need to go to a grow ration. They'll start getting stale on you. Because, I mean, it's you're pumping them. They get hay bellies on them. And, you know, the calves are doing good enough. You know, they either need to go to wheat or grass. Or you need to bump them to a grow ration that's got, you know, more corn and, and protein and, and more silage in it. And you need to be doing that anyway because of cost. But the barn that we built last year... I couldn't have told you if it worked at all. I really couldn't have. Last year was horrible. It was dry. Tons of mycoplasma. And it didn't matter where you got the cattle, they were going to die. And, I mean, people were losing 20 to 25 percent of their kids. And that's, that's not a joke. They really were. Um, so I thought the barn was probably just a giant waste of money. Now, to be quite honest with you, the barn, um, super, super wet October, uh, lots of rain, lot of snow, we had two snowstorms, inches of rain, the calves that were in the pens, I'm still doctoring calves because of that, that crap. You know, a month later, I'm doctoring calves because of, because of that. The calves that went into the barn, I made doctor one out of a hundred. The calves that weren't in the barn... Same weather, we weaned exactly the same time, had all the same backgrounding shots at, you know, out in the pastures, and, you know, uh, we doctored maybe 20%, I'd have to look, but we doctored a bunch of them, and calves are getting shipped in, uh, I, I ended up with 30 of them in the barn, I doctored two, no death loss on them. Calves that 
didn't go in the barn that have been shipped in of you know I'm going through a bottle of res floor a day easy <coughs> and I mean we're just pumping medicine but we're having a good good response you know the ones that you know we're catching them and we're having a really good response but we just had got a lot of sick cattle so I am extremely happy we built the barn I'm excited to buy Kev's again. I haven't been excited to buy Kev's in a couple of years. I really haven't been. Um, you know, going into this winter, I'm excited to buy Kev's. I'll probably, I haven't bought Kev's since August, so when I start buying Kev's again, my pens are full. I don't have any room for them, but here in probably a month or so, I'll start buying again. I'm excited for it. I really am. And that, that's saying a lot because it's it's been pretty pretty rough. We got old CRISPR McLaughlin. Um, he has a new baby. She was born the day before mine. Oh, what is it like having a boss who is one twentieth of your size? How's parenting treating you and the missus? I love it. Uh, it's it's changed my life, and I know everyone says that, but it really has. It's I couldn't be happy. Um, we got a really nice baby though. She uh, she's actually been really calm about a lot of stuff, so it's been been fantastic. I'm I couldn't be really couldn't be happier. So it's definitely been an adjustment, but for the good. Had to start sometime. Justin Mays asks, do you ever buy calves from the West Coast? Uh, I don't. I've sent sent some cattle to the West Coast. We sent a load of steers to Fresno last year. Um, put my coffee pot back on here. I've, I've thought about trying to get some Arizona cattle, but really, the prices on them... They're going to cost what they cost here, so might be a little more tougher. I don't know, I've thought about Mexican cattle, but I think uh, for right now, you know, I've, I've been trying just to get this thing built and, and try to get where I'm not losing money all the time on every single load of calves. And it's start to get better um, so I'm, I'm just uh, maybe buy a little more local cattle this year I might buy some more um, I guess they would be you know southwest like southern New Mexico maybe some Arizona cattle I don't know uh, let me see what I can't do there try to get a little more hardier calf uh, if the prices are right, I'll be buying Southern Kevs. Uh, but that goes back to margins. It's all on the margins. Uh, I know I can feed the cattle for really cheap. Uh, my biggest deal is just death loss. I mean, you get uh, a mycoplasma deal like last year, where it didn't matter where the cattle were coming from. Uh, local Kevs, you were losing... 20%, Southern Cavs, you were losing 20%, it just, everything was just dying. So, yeah, that's where the Southern Cavs, them being cheap, help you, help you break even at least. But, you know, it really is a toss up. If I knew the right answer, <clears throat> I would probably share it, but I'd, I'd get a few loads through first before I did. Oh, William Emling asks, uh, sorghum, millet, round bales, what's, what's your opinion on feeding it during the winter? We feed the heck out of them. I mean, that's, and it's amazing, a lot of people, well, they shy away from it, but that's all pretty much anyone would feed. Uh, there's a lot of wheat hay now, but mainly it was all hay grazier, red top cane, uh, BMR, I think BMR hager is just phenomenal. Um, used to be a lot of millet, not so much anymore. Now it's more of a hybrid 
the hybrid pearl or something like that. I mean, it's phenomenal feed. Uh, and it's good for us because, you know, we're, we're not zero degrees all the time. We're not, um, I don't know, we're not covered in snow all the time. So we don't have to feed hay all the time. That, I guess that's where I was going with that. So we're not out there running with bale processors all the time. But, you know, when we do have to feed, and we do have to feed, because uh, we do get snow here. I know I am in New Mexico, but we're in the very northeast corner, right next to Colorado. We're a mile high. Most of the county is between a mile and, you know, 7,000 feet. Um, you know, 6,800 feet. We, we are high. We do get snow. And uh, when it does snow, we can get a lot of it. Most of it comes in drifts. So, and the thing about it is everyone's cattle here are in the pastures. No one pulls cows in to feed because that's not something we have to do. So we winter on the pastures. So our cows are spread out everywhere. And, you know, that's mainly why people don't have equipment here because we don't bring them in in the wintertime. Everyone has bale beds. Um, I've got equipment because I farm and I have a little feedlot. But I still wouldn't be going, you know, eight miles to the other end of the ranch wherever there's a hundred cows there currently. I'm not going to go that far with a piece of equipment unless I absolutely have to. Not every day. Oh, that's good. The fire is a little warm. Um, so, yeah, it's, I think it's a phenomenal feed. All right, Corey Brown, fire looks nice. Looks like you're having some cold weather in the panhandle. It's just raining in East Texas. Didn't leave a comment. Missed out. Joseph Melson, how's wheat feeding going? How much does power per day cost to grind? Cost run one pivot, rough guess is fine. Uh, so, yeah, two questions. Uh, we'll do the, the, the pivot question. So, like, irrigating, irrigating one day is, you know, it's about $200 a day. Uh, maybe $180 to $200 a day to run a pivot in the well. So, and that's pretty close. Um, how's the wheat feeding going? So, I bought a bunch of wheat seed. Uh, everyone pretty much said I was an idiot for doing it. Uh, our calves are gaining fantastic on it. Now, we are feeding it whole currently. I'm going to feed this to my cows. Um, now, a lot of this wheat, you know, they are getting some good out of it, but some of it is going all the way through, so they're not getting everything. We're not putting a lot in the ration. I think people thought I was going to be dumping a lot of feed into it, but we're only putting, like, two, three percent, maybe two percent in the ration. It's not a lot. Um, so, you know, the cows, we might do, you know, a pound, two pounds a day. I don't know. But I bought the wheat so cheap that I can sit on that stuff for the next five years and not care. I really could care less. Um, you know, interest will suck by then, but, you know, it's not going to cost me anything to sit on it, so I can feed it slowly. And if it knocks, if it knocks my cost of gain down on my ration, you know, a cent or two cents, or hell, if if I get five cents of gain down, then that was a hell of a deal. That stuff will pay me back in spades, you know, not spades, cause, but I mean, it, it'll do really, really good. Um, because I, I bought it cheap. I bought it really cheap. The one thing I, I do want to do is I'm going to go get another roller mill like mine that's still trailer mounted and everything so I don't have to move mine. I've got a big project planned for it. I bought some hopper bins. I'm going to move it. I'm finally going to do what I wanted to do with it. Um, but what we're going to do is we're going to set that mill probably for the size of corn but just more than likely, it'll be just the size of that wheat to uh, just crack it, and I don't mean even in half. Like if all we if all we do is rough it up, you know, just get that coating 
a little rough on that coating or put little hairline fractures in it, you know, if we can get that on 50% of it or 90% of it or 30% of it and just boost our efficiency, get those digestive juices a, a place to start on it where they can get in there and soften it up then and not have an absorption problem, then that's, you know, we're going to try it. But the thing is, is you got to do it slowly. Well, we're not feeding a whole hell of a lot of it to begin with. I haven't even gone through the first truckload of it, and I got 12 of the things, so. It's going to take me a while. It's going to take me a couple of years to feed it all up. But that's okay. Um... Now we got Justin Glenn. A lot of East Texas guys watch the channel. Hello from East Texas. We enjoy your show. Have you had any trouble with sensors going on on your baler? I have not had any trouble with sensors going out on my baler. I did have... This is round baler again. <coughs> I did have a problem with a... Uh, low voltage alarm. Uh, it was like 2 in the morning, I was bailing. Something happened. Something screwy happened with the tractor. I don't remember what it was. And it kicked a low voltage meter and oh, that was biggest pain in the butt. But I realized all I had to do after I dicked with that for about an hour and a half of bailing and that alarm going off and then it is I just unplugged the the monitor from the power and plugged it back in. Never had another problem. Saw so that pretty much. I mean, it, other than that, no, not yet. Don't have a lot of bales on it, so you know, maybe maybe it won't be a giant disaster. But I do like the baler. I really do. It's a new baler. It's pretty amazing. When baling hay grazer for winter f winter feed, how long should it lay and dry before baling? Well, it needs to lay there until it's dry. You know, you can bale it at 18%, you can bale it at 15%. You know, that's... I've baled it a lot wetter than 18%, but it's set there. Um, if you're referring to... Like the acid, like if it gets a freeze or it's if if it's drought stressed, um, it's gotta it's gotta just completely dry out before you can do anything with it. And the best thing, like everyone gets scared with hay grazer, um, and I've fed a lot of hay grazer that we put a lot of fertilizer on, and I've never had a, a trouble. But you know what? What's a seventy dollar hay sample versus one cow? You know, or one calf? Take a sample, send it off, see if you have a nitrate problem. If you do have a nitrate problem, mix it with other feed. You know, if you don't have that ability, sell it to somebody who can. More likely, you won't get what you want. But I mean, you can you can blend it with other hay, especially if you you have a mixer. They do that all the time. Um, but just get a test on it. I've never seen hay grazer that was too had too much, much nitrates. I've never seen it. Uh, I know it happens, but I've also never cut drought stressed hay grazer or, or right as it froze either, so maybe that's why. Uh, Steven Ingersoll asks, how's the wheat working in your ration? Working great. Drew McFeeders. Drew was going to, uh, he asked me about starting a YouTube channel. I don't know that he did. Uh, if you have, that I would actually like to watch it. I watch him on uh, uh, Instagram. I think he would have an awesome YouTube channel. I really do. Uh, the bail processor, love it. I mean, I I couldn't have gotten a better deal for my my operation. That that hay slicer. I got the Dewey Super Slicer. For those those fresh calves or weaning calves or anything like that, it is it's perfect because beforehand I was using a pitchfork. This thing, I love it. I really do. It's fantastic. 
Uh, I can just go early in the morning, put hay out all the bunks for the super fresh calves. I've got some thinner cows up close at the house, give them a bale. Um, then, you know, those calves within a couple days, you know, 10 days, 5 days, 3 days, whatever it is, when they're ready and we transition them, I mean, it's just so nice. I don't have a bale sitting there where I'm just looking at it like, man, i got to feed up this whole bale, or I don't want to get another half bale and just have it sit there, and then it's going to be in the way of my feed truck. Um, it, it has saved me so much time. It's not even funny. Uh, we, we get it done, get it done quickly. If we're having a problem with a feed mixer, run and feed hay real quick, and then we're not sitting there worrying about the calves not getting fed, the calves aren't crawling through the bunks because they're hungry because, you know, you're not feeding them till that afternoon, whatever the reason is. It's best money I've spent in a long, long time. I mean, it was... The freight, the freight was kind of expensive, but, you know, the, the machine was still cheaper than anything near me by a couple thousand after I freighted it. So... You know, I bought that in Burns, Oregon. And <laughs> I freighted it all the way here. Um, I thought about dragging it home behind my wife's pickup from Burns, Oregon, which is 1,500 miles. But then I was like, my wife's pregnant. You know, that was middle of June. You know, 45 days later, we had a... a baby I mean that that would have been horrible um you know the trip up there wasn't bad but on the way back you know that was that was a little long and I'm glad I didn't do that I'm glad I spent the two thousand dollars and just had it shipped to me uh originally I thought it was going to be like a fifteen hundred a thousand and they're like well it's going to be two thousand and I got you know I wasn't happy about that but really it, it was worth it um, so, on top of that, Drew, if you see this, start a YouTube channel. It's, I love your Instagram. You got tons of cattle and farming and wheat and everything. I think it, I think it did good. You know. Lee Parker, uh, very interesting in your new, very interested in your new weaning preconditioned ration. I know it contains grass hay. Uh, we don't have grass hay. We are just grinding wheat hay, so or triticale, mix 30. Um, so we're running like 5 or 6% corn in it. Um, maybe 15% dry distillers. Maybe 1 or 2% wheat. Uh, one Maybe like a percent of a like a backgrounding or a, a balancer pellet that's got remincing in it, uh, and a little bit of silage, um, not much silage. We 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 did have the silage in there to start getting the calves where they would go on to silage, but it's mainly hay um, and water. We run in water in all of our rations. Um, very interested in your well, yeah, and that's. Okay, I start calves in South Central Texas and constantly fight high feed costs. That's a big thing. Like, so me, that's that's the last one. Um, that's my, one of my problems is, is high feed costs. And it's very hard for me to be competitive. So down the road you have Delhart. I um, mean, you know, I'm 45 miles from Delhart. And it is no... I can't even compete with their feed because their corn is way cheaper because they're surrounded by it. Uh, they don't have to freight it, so you're looking at board cost of corn. Uh, to get corn delivered up here, five bucks a bushel, you know. Uh, you, can, you can get corn here, you know, 20, 20 above the board. Uh, the local co-op, 75 above the board just to load it. Uh, that's not freighting it. So you really kind of got hooked up with a farmer, but most of their stuff they contract so quickly. I mean, it's not, they can get rid of it very quickly. Um, so, 
Yeah, that's that's kind of our big cost. Corn's five, you know, five bucks by the time it's rolled in here. Uh, distillers, you know, uh, we're at ten to fifteen dollars a ton higher on distillers than anyone because freight. Uh, wet corn gluten's super high because you're shipping water, and it it comes from about three hours away. Uh, our liquid feed. I think it's a pretty good cost. I'm pretty happy with it, but I'm also, you know, I'm also a dealer for it. But as much as you know, I buy, I wouldn't buy it from somebody else anyway, you know, because I have the, I can take semi loads of it. Uh, then you have silage. Silage we're pretty close on, um, but we've been pretty lucky to get stuff close by. And hay, you know, this year was, hay was high everywhere, so I was really in line, actually a little bit cheaper on my hay. Most years, I'm higher on my hay, and that's just because, you know, I'm running kevs on wheat, well then I'll hay that wheat, and our irrigation is so expensive. Um, anything that my kevs didn't pay for as far as production and everything like that, I put it into the cost of my hay. And so, you know, our hay can be anywhere from 100 to $150 a ton. And, you know, this year hay was higher than that. But I run my hay through the ration $150 a ton. Gave myself enough room when I buy it for myself to pay the interest to the bank. Because I'll, you know, I got I don't have 50 grand in my pocket. Um, and then I sell it through my my uh, feed yard and it usually it usually goes into the bunk at hundred and fifty dollars a ton by the time you figure loss on grinding interest and all that fun stuff so you know some years I'm twenty five dollars a ton higher some years I'm twenty five dollars a ton cheaper and that's just just kinda how you gotta roll with it uh, as far as Everything else, I mean, that's that's the big thing I will say about. I, I've had several people ask uh, young young guys who ask about you know we're gonna I'm gonna feed calves or you know this that and the other. Well, that's great. More power to you. It's it's taken. I'm not a very smart person, and it's taken me a long time to figure out. That there's probably a lot of other ways to make money qu quicker than this. Um, I also dealt with some some silly things um, happening, uh, so maybe I can save you a little bit of headaches. Get protection on your calves. Always get protection on your calves. Um, you know, I know it's expensive. Hedge your calves. You know, first, first and foremost, you need to record every single thing that you do, every shot to every single calf, every ounce of medicine, every single thing, uh, every pound of feed, everything. Your interest to get your exact cost, your break-even per head. Once you figure out your break-even per head, you kind of figure out what it's going to cost to feed your calf. Maybe it's 70 cents a pound gain, maybe it's 80 cents a pound gain, maybe it's 50 cents a pound gain. Um, you know, some of my calves right now are at 70 cents a pound gain. My feed lot marks the feed up 25%. So, my calves are gaining 70 cents a pound gain, but I'm making 20%, 15% on the feed that I'm selling to those calves. Um, so what I did, I diversified, and I built my feedlot, and my feedlot is a sole deal. Um, I, I still owe the money on both sides of it, but... That way, I can look at what it costs to feed a calf in my yard and what it costs to feed a calf in somebody else's yard, and I have a real comparison. Um, 
you know, I got yardage, I've got feed, I've got medicine, you know, every time I pull a calf, every everything, you got to figure that out. Once you figure that out and how much it's going to cost to put that weight on that calf, then you'll know your margin and you either buy a put on that calf or you hedge it if you're feeling froggy enough to hedge it. And hedging is a good way to go broke, um, but it's a good way not to go broke too. It's you, uh, and hedging is just now something I've really started getting into. Usually, um, I mainly do puts on cattle, uh, but the big problem I have is I buy heifers. And I will save you a very hard lesson to learn. So when you buy a heifer, when you say you, you've got a heifer, 750 pound heifer, she's worth, market value on her is, you know, say you want to lock in at $1.40. Well, to get that $1.40, the board has to be at $1.50. So say the board's at $1.50, the feeder board is at $1.50, and you know you're going to get $1.40 for your heifer. Well, that put is going to cost you $2. Um, you know, $2 a hundred weight. So, and there's 500 hundred weights per contract, so 50,000 pound load, 67 heifers. That's seven fifty. So you're going to spend, say you're going to spend, uh, $2,000 on that contract, on that put. Well, at $1.40. So that means your, uh, your break even, say that's your break even, is at $1.42 because you added, you know, $2,000 to that load of calves. Well, this is, this is the problem with puts on heifers. You're, if you're selling feeders, um, the board, say the board tanks, cash value tanks, and it was at a dollar fifty. Your put, your uh, your your put doesn't kick in until a dollar forty. Well, say the board gets down to a dollar forty. Steers are bringing a dollar forty. You're not going to get seven bucks back if you're losing ten to fifteen dollars worth of market position in a couple weeks. Those heifers are going to be fifteen dollars back. Well, where are you at? At a dollar, the feeder board is a dollar forty. You're at a dollar twenty-five. Is what those calves are actually going to sell for? So, you may have bought it at a dollar forty, but if it doesn't go under a dollar forty, you're still only going to sell them for a dollar twenty-five. And that's fifteen cents. That's seventy-five and and thirty-seven. You know, you're at a hundred dollars a head loss per calf when you thought so say you you bought your you bought your put at a dollar forty and you said I got it at a dollar forty. You know, it, if it goes under that, it's gonna pay me. That's not what's gonna happen. You're gonna lose fifteen dollars a hundred, fifteen cents a pound on every single calf. I learned that one the hard way. I lost a lot of money. And that's just because if the market is crashing when those cows are ready to sell, there's not really a whole lot you can do with them. And, you know, that's, that's I mean, you're going to get $15 back, so you're going to get $1.25, and your break-even's at $1.40, and actually your break-even's at $1.42, and if it doesn't go under, doesn't go under that, um, that's... That's a problem. That's where uh, heifers, I'm not going to tell you you should hedge them because, you know, then the market goes way up. You know, if you hedge them and that market goes up, well, see, then you're losing money, you know, then you're $10 back the other way going up. And that's, I haven't figured heifers out and that's all I seem to buy. And so, um, one of these days, I'll, I'll make money on them, but if you're gonna start feeding, you gotta you gotta figure out how to protect those cattle somehow. Forward contract them, do something. 
if you don't have any options and you have to use options on the board of trade, they're not as clear cut as they as they seem, and they can cost you a lot of money, and you can lose a lot of money on it. I mean, you really can, and that that I guess that if that's my one piece of advice is. You better have your pants cinched on, because it sucks sometimes. Um, it, it just really does. So, it's always better if you, I guess you can sell them. You know, if you know you can sell them and get a profit, sell them. Um, it's better to get $25 a head profit or $50 a head profit consistently on every single head than it is to be holding out for $200 a head profit and you end up losing $100 because you hedged them wrong, or you put your options on them wrong, because that can happen. Um, but, keep them alive, first and foremost. Keep the cattle alive, and you can make money on them. Theoretically. I'm probably not the one to tell you that you can do that. Because honestly, I haven't been the best at it. So I got two more things I for sure want to talk about. We'll go ahead and do that. So I had a, a lady get a hold of me. Um, through Facebook, and actually, I, I, I got this other thing I want to say first. Uh, recently, I was at the Ranch Rodeo, uh, the WRCA in Amarillo, and a man came up to me, and it, it was quite shocking to me. Um, he knew who I was. I didn't have the foggiest clue who he was. Um, guy's like, I know you. You're and I forget, I think he said SoCo or something, something like that on Facebook. And I was like, no, that, that's not me. I don't, I don't know who you're talking about. And then it kind of clicked that maybe he was talking about this. Um, really nice guy. Yeah, he said that, you know, he watched all the videos, lived up and my, my GoPro just died. Lived up in uh, Colorado. Uh, Worked for an outfit, had quite a few cows and background and heifers. Super nice guy. Um, I've just never had anyone come up who's seen one of my videos. Uh, really, if you're watching this, I extremely appreciated that. Uh, really kind of made my afternoon. Um, you know, this is something that I, I could care less if anybody close to me ever saw this. Um, would actually just prefer that they didn't see any of the videos. That's just kind of how I am, because uh, it's I just it's do it for fun. Uh, got some other reasons to do it, but the fact that you came up and said those nice words really, really appreciate it. It was very nice of you, uh, and I get a lot of a lot of nice people contact me uh, through like Facebook Messenger, and it, it's very nice. It makes you makes you want to do it, keep doing it. Uh, and then, so like this, a uh, lady wanted me to ask uh, for her boyfriend or fiance. They were wondering about these dart guns, um, kind of how they they worked, everything. So this is just a, uh, this is a pistol. I love it for in the feed truck. Uh, CO2 cartridge goes here. Uh, I think there is a cartridge in here. I just used it the other day. Yeah, um, so that's one thing, you don't want to leave cartridges in here for a very long time. It dries out the seals in them, but we were using it. Um, so, 
I use the disposable darts because when I do, when a medicine is effective and, and we can do it, I use a tremendous amount of darts. So, just kind of idea, Zaprevo, um, I like using Zaprevo or Draxin, really like using Draxin and darts. If Draxin's working, it's, it's just the bee's knees to run in a dart, it really is. So, the thing about it is, 5cc darts, disposable darts, um, super simple. I've got the reusable ones, um, but if you got 20, 30 head of calves scattered through all kinds of pans, wheat pasture, these things are amazing for wheat pasture, grass pasture. You don't gotta choke the calf to death. You don't have to rope the calf, pull it tight, take the picture of your horse pulling the rope tight, and then think about doctoring the calf with these things. Now, I, I know there's nothing wrong with being punchy and western, but if the calf is really that sick that you had to doctor it, take the rope off its damn neck so it doesn't choke to death. You're not helping the calf at that point. I'm sorry. Sure, it makes your Facebook look super awesome, and I like the pictures too. But when the cast it, <laughs> foam's coming out of its mouth and you, you chalked its nose real quick so they knew that you doctored it. Um, that's what these little buddies are for. They're not going to make you cool on Facebook. So I'm sorry, but they ain't going to do that. Um, they will, however, let you doctor the calf and I, I, some people get all preachy about low stress. I'm not going to be one of those people. But, you know, you're not going to chase the calf for a quarter of a mile and it's not going to fall over dead. Now, it may fall over dead anyway at some point, but it's not because you put this in its neck. Um, if you are going to use them, shoot them in the neck. People get really, really pissy about shooting them in the butt because the whole BQA deal. It's understandable. Um, big, super long needle. Uh, you can get these. I order like two, three hundred of these things, five hundred of them at a time, the darts. Uh, uh, they always throw some needles in for me. So what I do, is, I may have grabbed the one that was all crusty, but I take the needle off puncture the, the top a few times. Let me see if I can get a little closer here. And then what I'll do is I stick that thing up in there and then I'll I'll draw out my medicine. You know, that's 35, that's seven darts. You know, it'll, it'll actually do six. And then you take it and you just take that needle, which it's really nasty because it's been on the bottom of the... And I, And it goes right down. You can see how shaky I am. In there now. That's the bottom of the needle. Now you, I, I learned this the hard way. You want a long needle because what happens is when that fluid starts coming in here, it's going to go up past that needle. Now if you, if your needle doesn't go all the way through this needle, then it has no way for the air to get past it. So you want to be shooting the fluid down here, and that way the air can get up and out around this needle, and it doesn't start shooting liquid up out of the deal, because that's what it'll do. Um, and then, super simple, you take these little red caps that they do, and you just put it, you just slip it right over, and it just, it holds the medicine in. Super slick. Uh, and they send you extra, you know, one extra per pack. Then, I should have. I've got a rifle for longer ranges, you know, 30, 40 yards. This thing will shoot. This thing will shoot probably 30 yards at the furthest, 15 yards, something like that. 
just slide it there in the back, which, and then you'll just put your little dart in over first click, nothing. Second click is uh, like half shot, so up close. If you're like right next to him, just do the, the middle click because if you don't, it'll have a really big charge behind it and it'll just hit them really hard. Um, and sometimes it can bounce. And then you see $4 CC medicine spray and nobody wants to do that. Last click, you know, further distance. And uh, yeah, so these ones, uh, I love them. I mean, I really do. They work really well. You can't, you can shoot Batril through them, but, um, problem with Batril, and you can get bigger darts. You, you can get 10, 12 cc darts. Um, I like the fives for, for, uh, Jackson, you know, 400 pound Kef, it's 4.4 cc's per 100 pounds. Um, or it's 1.1 cc per 100 pounds, so you're at four and a half. They'll make a four and a half cc dart. Um, you just hit them with five cc's. And, you know, I've heard people complain about that, but you're gonna screw up in a syringe anyway, and you're still gonna give them five cc's. Uh, so that's just kind of how it works. For doctoring a lot of cattle, as long as the medicine's working, it's great. Um, I've had, I've used Bachel through it in the 12 cc's. Um, these things are five bucks a piece, you know, so they are expensive, but they're worth it. They really are. Uh, if you buy a lot of them, they do a bulk deal. I get them through Capture, um, through that company. They just ship them out of Georgia. They do a good deal, but you gotta buy like a hundred packs or something. So that's just, you know, that's 500 darts that you gotta buy. <coughs> and, you know, maybe, maybe that you don't want to buy that many because, you know, it'll take you a couple years just to use them, but uh, they're, they're completely worth it to have. Especially if they're big open pastures and you don't have a horse with you. You don't have a four-wheeler with you. You're just going to check the calves real quick. All of a sudden, there's a sick calf. Now you're going to drive 20 miles back to your house to get a horse or a four-wheeler. Then drive 20 miles back. You know, keep these in a just a little toolbox. Bottle, you know, get you a small bottle of medicine, whatever. Five pack of darts, something. I, I keep lots of CO2 charges because, you know... If in the summertime, you know, I'll use one charge and I'll keep it in there for a day or two. And if I don't see any sick calves, I'll just pull it out, you know. The charges are cheap because the reality of it is, you know, spend, you know, a charge is like a dollar or maybe it's a dollar or five dollars, whatever it is, and a dart is five bucks plus the cost of your medicine. Well, it doesn't matter if you spent $30 to give that one calf a shot, if the calf lives, and whoop de doo But if you're going to moan and groan about, you know, that extra $6 or $10, whichever it may be, to give that same medicine, and that calf dies because you wanted to go back and rope it, and don't get me wrong, I got ropes hanging on the walls. I, I roped calves all summer long because we were away from a set of pins and we were having to use res floor and you can't shoot a really viscous really thick medicine through the darts you can't do it it's got to be you know really real water like it's got to be pretty thin to shoot through it and the only medicines that you know, you have that problem. You can't use Exceed, but you got to give that in the air or under the air in the fat pocket. You can use Batril, but you got to run 15 cc's of that anyway because you don't want to shoot it three different times, three different days. Um, new floor, res floor, they're not going to go. Uh, Mike Attil, 
I mean, I've thought about using it, but I am not, I'm not that froggy. It's not worth it. You know, you load a dart with my Cotillia, you're probably going to shoot yourself. You know, don't, don't do that and shoot yourself and get it taken away from everybody. That's not worth it. So, that's what I like to use them. Uh, now, if Draxon's not working, or Zaprevo, or Zaptran isn't working, see, you could use Zaptran and run a 10cc dart, but on the 10cc darts, you know, that are CO2 powered, you, you really kind of need the rifle if they're any distance at all, because that's a lot of weight, and they will fall quickly. And, you know, there's nothing worse than the dart hitting the ground and puncturing that little red stopper, because then all your medicine goes through it. You know, 20, 30 bucks right there. That's no fun. It happens. I mean, it really does. I've done it. So, that kind of gives you an idea on where to go. Uh, that worked pretty good. I had a an old older man try to get a hold of me on Facebook through his daughter's Facebook or wife's Facebook. Uh, he just wanted to send a question in the mail through the Saddle Shed series, but it hasn't arrived yet. So, if you happen to be watching this, uh, there's going to be another one. So, leave your questions below and we'll do another one. But, well, that's about uh, really that's kind of what's been going on. I guess I can touch on, I haven't, I put one video up in the past month. Um, I've been extremely busy. Uh, the last video was soggy pen, soggy cattle, and I touched on that in the last video I put up. Um, so it's been about five weeks since I asked for these questions. I was just now looking on the, that sheet earlier in it, five weeks ago. Um, we, so we've been preg checking cows. <coughs> we started that. <coughs> Doing great. Phenomenal. Um, probably, honestly, I think it's the best I've ever seen it on everyone else's cows but mine. My cows didn't do too good. Uh, my cows were above 90%, and I shouldn't be complaining too much because they don't look great. Uh, no grass all summer. And these are all everybody else's junk cows. They're all sale barn cows. Did we stop recording? still recording. So, I don't know why it got all pissy. I, oh, I think it changed. I think I hit my uh, time limit. It's probably been out here for an hour. Um, so what happened is, they're all everyone else's junk cows. They just didn't, they, they were above 90s, but, and I've just been buying cows along and selling cows. Um, but the rest of the cows, about 97%, 97 to 98%. I was very happy with that for the year that we've had. It's been a horrible year as far as grass production, just none. And so, what we do, what we were doing <coughs> is, and all these cows were AI, or not AI, but um, ultrasound. And uh, I'll explain it in another video. It's, amazing how this guy did it. Uh, very happy with it. I mean, he can see the heartbeat. You can see everything. We had a cow. The calf's heartbeat was slow. He was like, hey, she's probably going to slough that calf. We pulled her out. Uh, just keep her on the side. Watch her. And saw one calf. You know, she would have been pregged as a P2, but that calf was actually, it wasn't alive. It, it started, like, the calf died or something. It was, uh, you know, starting to calcify, and, you know, any other vet, it would have just been a P2. But he had actually saw the calf had died, it was starting to, 
how, you know, some, he actually said it was becoming mummified. So, <clears throat> and I've seen those calves. I've seen them. You know, you'll find them out in the pasture. So, that cow, gone. Um, but other than that, I mean, fantastic deal. I was very happy with it. Um, sent part of our cows to corn stalks. We've got three circles of them. Um, this next week, I'm going to sort up a bunch of other cows that don't calve any time close to anything else. They, they're all fall calvers when I got them. Um, going to work through them, and I'm going to send what I can to corn stalks. My neighbor had a circle that he wanted to plant wheat on, so he wanted to bale all the corn stalks. I've never done that before, and in one circle, we put up 650 bales, and it was like a rush kind of thing. So he shredded them. The stalks were sopping wet, you know, the, the bases of them. There's some of those bales at 30%. I mean, it was, get them, we had to get them gone. Not ideal. The baler did fantastic with them. I'm very, very impressed with how it did. But I was working till 2 in the morning and then feeding cattle and doctoring cattle until the afternoon and then getting back on a tractor. The minute we were done baling, we had to haul them out. And that, it was just me. Uh, my dad stacked all the bales uh, in groups one day. It just took forever. I have not wanted to make a video. And then as soon as that was done, we had to preg check more cows. And we had to, we've had calves come in. We've just been overloaded with calves. Doctoring calves, shipping calves back out. Uh, just been swamped. And so, haven't made a video. So, I hope this makes up for it. I hope this was a good video. See, our fire's dying. My coffee cup's about empty. We'll catch you on the next one.